Hello, this is Mika from Albert Einstein Institute and I am here to talk about optical simulations for LISA. We here at AEI perform variety of interferometric simulations using our software tool called EFOCUT. This is a C++ based software library that has been built at AI. This enables the users to design interferometers and compute signals as the real detectors would do. This has several more features like the implementation of the general astigmatic Gaussian beam propagation and some extended methods for uh, decomposing a beam like mode expansion method and Gaussian beam decomposition. So there are some talks concerning EFOCAD. There is this uh, really interesting talk by my colleague Tim Hasa on EFOCAD and there is this talk by Mai Wang Zhao by, uh, for concerning the uh, mode expansion method and uh, Gaussian beam decomposition. So just in case if you are interested to know more about EFOCAD and recent implementation then you, you can uh, listen to the talks by them. So now coming back to the simulations for LISA, we here want to use our software library to uh, perform various simulations for investigating SPACs in LISA. So for that we have this implementation of the LISA optical bench in EFOCAD. This is called as the phase zero model of the LISA optical bench which has been implemented in 3D using EFOCAD. So we want to use this implementation of the optical bench for our studies. We, uh, we have been working on some simulations including the, uh, the, this implementation. Um, and now here I am going to talk about uh, those simulations only. So the simulations that uh, uh, we have been studying for uh, the optical noise in LISA and the optical noise that we are interested in is tilt to length coupling. This is the uh, coupling of the additional path length in the interferometric readout due to relative misalignments of the instruments. This is broadly categorized into two parts, the geometric TTL coupling and the non-geometric TTL coupling. The geometric TTL coupling is uh, associated with geometrical changes on the optical setups. So let us understand how. There is this diagram on the left side. Uh, here we see that there are two beams approaching the detectors. So one of the beam is rotated with respect to the other and this rotated red beam has to travel through a longer path and there is this uh, tiny uh, difference of the path length of the two beams which is optical path difference. We can imagine that if this red beam starts to uh, have the continuous tilts then it will also walk on the detector. So this is geometric TTL coupling. The non-geometric TTL coupling is associated with the wavefronts. We know that beams have uh, propagating wavefronts. So if we are talking about the interference of the two beams on the detectors then we mean that uh, this is the interference of the respective wavefronts on each point of the detector. So if there are continuous uh, relative misalignments of the beams then this uh, interference on the wavefront level is getting disturbed and this is non-geometric TTL coupling. Here we are interested in investigating the longitudinal path length signal which has the contribution from both uh, the geometric and non-geometric counterpart yet we have our interests inclined towards the geometric TTL coupling because we have control over the geometry of the optical setups. We can optimize the setups by playing around with the geometry and uh, hence we can affect the cross coupling in the longitudinal path length signal and somewhere we can also uh, contribute to reduce the overall cross coupling by optimizing the system. So this TTL coupling is one of the major sources of noise and concerning the suppression of the TTL coupling uh, which is very much necessary to maintain the efficiency of LISA for detecting the gravitational wave signal. So uh, going to the, uh, to, to the uh, mitigation part. So let us understand how that uh, TTL cross coupling can be suppressed uh, in our models. So we have already seen this diagram, we have understood it that if the beam is rotating with respect to the other then it also works on the detector. Now uh, referring to the diagram on the right we have this rotating test mass and from where this uh, red beam is originating and this is also rotated. So if we wisely introduce the uh, set of lenses in its path then it can uh, somehow manage to uh, converge the beam on the center of the detector where it meets the other beam also. So that's how we ensure that uh, the beam walk is minimal on the detector. 
and we are done this is the way to reduce the cross coupling uh, in the longitudinal path length signal but in the implementation of the lisa optical bench in efocut these imaging systems were missing earlier and their placeholders existed so we designed those imaging systems we implemented them on lisa optical bench in in the framework of efocut and we tested their performance for test mass and long arm interferometer so the earlier situation was like uh, we had uh, several empty boxes on the bottom portion of the lisa optical bench model so these empty boxes were the placeholders for the optical components to be added later once these imaging systems were designed using efocut they were placed on the uh, optical bench replacing those empty boxes and then we performed the testing on the test mass and uh, long arm interferometer for the imaging systems and we computed the optical path difference between the two beams uh, with the relative tilts and found that the opds recorded in the presence of uh, imaging systems are significantly reduced for each of the interferometer here we can see that although the opds are reduced but they are not yet zero and which was not the aim actually we aimed at reducing the overall cross coupling in the longitudinal path length signal which has the contribution from both the geometric and non geometric ttl coupling so we uh, optimized the geometric ttl coupling by controlling the geometry of the system and we computed the longitudinal path length signal for each of the interferometer we observed that on using the imaging system this uh, overall cross coupling in the lps is strongly suppressed it is brought down close to zero for test mass and long arm interferometer so it turned out to be a success that uh, using the imaging systems we can uh, control and we can strongly suppress the cross coupling in the uh, lps signal so that was all about the ttl analysis on the lisa optical bench now moving on to the other half uh, this concerns the signal quality with the tilts in the test mass the signal quality is associated with power here we can see that the power is plotted for two signals and there is this tiny phase difference between the signals which we can observe only in case of the sufficient amplitude of the power that means if the amplitude of the power would have been too low that uh, it would have become harder for us to extract this phase difference and that's what the difficulty with the detectors also so for that uh, the quantity that depends on the power amplitude and defines the signal quality is contrast which means lower the contrast poor will be the quality of the signal so for achieving the good enough quality of the signal on the detector size uh, in the test mass interferometer we made a conservative choice for principal investigation for the contrast minimum the threshold was chosen to be 10% of the contrast maximum then we designed a system with the nominal settings of the test mass and computed the contrast as a function of tilt and we found that corresponding to the uh, threshold that we have chosen there are the cut off values on the either side of the tilts Uh, tilt angle so this is uh, from minus 325 micro radians to plus 325 micro radians so this is an optimal range so this is a kind of operating range for our detectors to detect the signals with good enough quality so we are not done yet here because at this point uh, the test was preliminary with temporary settings we did not know yet that how this uh, Uh, contrast threshold and the cut off values of the tilt angle going to behave with different detector sizes and different beam characteristics so we extended our studies and we computed contrast and differential wavefront sensing signals with the tilts for different detector sizes and we observed that the uh, operating range of the angles for the uh, minimal contrast threshold uh, chosen earlier yet remains the same it is effectively the same and uh, in this range we found that the dws curve is uh, mostly linear so which is a good sign then we moved on to the uh, different beam characteristics we performed our computations for the different beam waste locations and we computed uh, contrast and dws signal with the tilts and found that the allowed range here also is effectively same for each of the curve 
why are we using this word effectively because there are minor changes but we are ignoring for, uh, them for the moment because uh, they do not hamper it is very safe to uh, choose this uh, range here uh, that is from minus 325 micro radians to plus 325 micro radians and we see that uh, our dws uh, curve shows uh, the most linear nature here in this uh, range as the earlier so now uh, it's about the last test performed for uh, the changes in the beam properties that is for the different beam waist sizes we computed contrast and dws uh, for the tilts and we found that here the operating range is again effectively unchanged for each of the uh, beam waist uh, size curves here and it is safe to choose the operating range between uh, from uh, minus 325 micro radians to plus 325 micro radians because here the dws curve yet not so linear but monotonous so it is uh, it is actually um, mm, fine to work with this range so here uh, we have inferred from all the computations that uh, the optimal range for the uh, quality of the signal on the tilt angle for the test mass interferometer is uh, the range is unaffected uh, or it is effectively the uh, same for all the properties and uh, characteristics studied here so that was all about the contrast study and here is this brief summary we have designed and implemented the desired imaging systems for the phase zero model of the lisa optical mesh using in, uh, efocut we have uh, performed the testing on the test mass interferometer and long arm interferometer for our imaging systems. We have probed the operational range of the tilts in the test mass interferometer using the contrast and the DWS signal. Now throwing some light on the additional work in progress, our group has been working on the implementation of the aspheric surfaces which is necessary for the, uh, for the construction of the LISA telescope. Uh, so al already the uh, initial implementation has, al uh, has been done and we are also working on developing the methods for simulating uh, the deflected light beam in EFOCAT. Now some future plans. We are looking forward towards uh, implementing the LISA telescopes in EFOCAT. Uh, very soon and uh, we want to perform various simulations hence uh, after the implementation of uh, LISA telescope uh, with the uh, simulations with concerning the long arm interferometer. So that was all about the content of my work and this work has been supported by Chinese Academy of Sciences and Max Planck Institute uh, and Max Planck Society in the framework of legacy cooperation on low uh, frequency gravitational wave astronomy and here I have provided the grant number of the, uh, the Max Planck Institute I am associated with. So before I rest my talk I would also like to refer to some of the talks by my colleagues that are related to my work so if you are interested then you, you can listen to the talks by these people and they are really really interesting talks so that was all from my side thank you for your attention if you have any questions then feel free to ask yeah thank you have a nice day